So this question asks us to determine the force that's exerted on a bullet as it travels down the length of a rifle barrel. And we've learned in this chapter that the sum of the forces that are acting on the bullet would equal the mass of the bullet times the bullet's acceleration. We can safely assume that the only force that is exerted on the bullet right now is the force of the gunpowder exploding and propelling the bullet forward. So this would be our force. And therefore, when we say the net force right here, we're just going to do the force that is exerted on the bullet by, again, probably the gunpowder. We'll just call this FB. This is what we're looking for in the question. We'll label it as such here as well. And we need two things. We need the mass of the bullet times the acceleration of the bullet. Now, of course, we have the mass already, although do note we're going to have to convert that into kilograms later on. But what's missing is, of course, the acceleration of the bullet. We're not going to be able to get the force until we get the acceleration. So we're going to need to use some equations from a prior chapter to get the acceleration, but let's list some items that we know. We can assume that the initial velocity of the bullet is zero meters per second. Most bullets start from rest before they're fired. The final velocity of the bullet was given here as 320 meters per second. We also know the length of the rifle barrel and therefore the displacement of the bullet is going to be that length. It's going to be the 0.82 meters. And then again, we're going to be looking for the acceleration. Now we have a number of equations from kinematics but the one that's going to be most useful in this case is the following. And the reason it's the most useful is because it, it contains everything we know except for the variable that we're looking for, the acceleration. It might be convenient to solve this equation for the acceleration. And to do that, you would subtract the initial velocity squared on both sides of the equation, which cancels it out on the right side. So now we have the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared is equal to 2a delta x. And then finally, to solve for the acceleration, we will divide both sides by 2 delta x, like so. So the 2s cancel, the delta x's cancel, and we're left with an expression for the acceleration. And once we have this expression for the acceleration, we can actually come back and plug this expression back into the Newton's second law that we were developing earlier. We had the force acting on the bullet equals the mass of the bullet times the acceleration. And again, for the acceleration, we're just going to fill in this new expression that we've just determined. And then all we have to do is just plug in the known information, and we've got the force that's being exerted on the bullet. Remember, the mass was 5 grams, and as noted, we have to change that into kilograms. So to do that, you just take your grams of 5 and multiply that by 10 to the minus 3. That puts it into kilograms for you. The final velocity, that was written down in our list of information. It was 320 meters per second. Don't forget to square it. So we'll throw that in parentheses and put a squared. Now, technically, we have to subtract the initial velocity squared. But remember that that was just 0. So that's actually inconsequential. And then we'll divide this all by 2 times the linear displacement of the bullet, which was the 0.82 meters. And at this point, pick up your calculator and punch this information in. And again, don't forget to square that final velocity. And when you do this, you should end up with a force on the bullet of about 312 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to the question.